from Dragon House Studios, buried deep in the heart of the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains Autonomous Zone. I'm Michael Bain, and this is Triggered. Today we're going to do a deep dive into our vaults to spend some time with one of my favorite type of guns and my favorite cartridge in the whole world, lever guns, 44 Magnum. Let's take a look. Today I want to talk about two of my most favorite things in the entire world, and that's 44 caliber lever action rifles and cowboy action shooting. But before we go into hardware, I want to just go a little bit into wetware, maybe a little bit out in the weeds on why do we compete? As you know, if you've listened to the podcast, if you've seen Shooting Gallery here over the last decade, you know I am a huge proponent of competition because competition will raise your level of shooting skills. The more you handle the gun, the more you shoot, the better you get. But there are other reasons than that. And, and competition sometimes is an end in itself. I want to compete. I want to get better. Last year, I was at a USPSA major national match. And I ran into a guy that, that I shot with back in, gosh, the uh, 70s in Florida, at my old uh, uh, USPSA combat club in Florida. I think he said he was 83, and he was still out there and he's still shooting race guns, still shooting USPSA as a grandmaster, and he goes, I love it. I still love it. I want to get a little bit better in that sport. That's competition for its own sake, and that's perfectly good. I've done it numerous times in numerous sports. There's nothing in the world wrong with that. But there's a second way you can use competition to raise your skill levels, and that's a little bit what I want to talk about today. What you get out of competition is what you bring to competition. I think that probably goes without saying. If you want to compete in cowboy action shooting and you want to run with the big dogs or the big hats, as it were, you're going to have to have a certain type of equipment. That certain type of equipment is 38 rifle, probably 1873. Why? Because you can run it on a little tiny stroke and you can make it go really, really fast. That's the kind of things that you're going to use. That's what you're going to compete with. But And I've done that for a decade. But recently, I started going back to compete with 44s, 44 Specials, 44 Russians. And the reason I did was because I wanted something else from the sport. I was planning a hunting trip to Africa, planned to use lever action rifles. That's what I wanted to get out of the sport. And after that trip was over, I discovered that I really, really liked shooting 44 and Cowboy, even though it means I don't win the Cadillac. As you know, Cowboy action shooting is essentially the first three-gun sport. You have to have a rifle, usually a lever action, sometimes a pump action, which doesn't work. You've got two revolvers and a shotgun, either a double barrel shotgun or a Winchester 1897 clone. So, since I got back from Africa, i had been practicing a lot with this gun, my choice, and I've decided to keep shooting this gun in SAS, the Single Action Shooting Society. Uh, here's why. It's fun, it's hard, and we're going to be talking about that through this whole program, and it's something a little different for a change. You've seen this gun before, I just wanted to take you through it again. It is, it is a Marlin 1894 Cowboy. It's got an octagonal barrel, what is it, like, I don't know, 18 inch barrel, something like that. The only thing I've changed on it is it has Skinner peep sights on it, Skinner Express peep sights, and a slightly higher front sight so that, that um, it works. I can center that front bead right there in the middle of the rear peep sight. Uh, the other modification, of course, is some sort of leather wrap here because in cowboy action shooting, you run the gun. And if you run the gun a lot without some kind of leather wrap on it, you'll find that you have like nice little cuts across the, across your fingers. It doesn't work that great. So I like shooting this gun. It's heavy. I'm shooting roughly 44 special light loads. Essentially, I'm shooting exactly the same loads that, say, the Cowboys in uh, 1878, 1880 were carrying in their 45 Colts uh, roughly a you know, 240 grain bullet moving at 700, 750 feet per second. It worked well in the Old West because it was a, a de definite man stopper. So I'm running those loads in this gun. Now they're much smaller than 44 Magnum loads, but at the same time, I can make a case that, hey, it's pretty close ballistically to what Wyatt Earp carried down the street in Tombstone. 
Uh, you don't have to do that in cowboy action shooting. Cowboy action shooting has a floor you can get to, or actually a ceiling. You, you have to hit a, a certain uh, uh, speed of the bullet and weight of the bullet. You can't just put it as light as you can because sooner or later one of the bullets will end up about here and you'll put another bullet behind it and it will be a mess. So, but I, I like shooting loads that are the ballistic equivalent of their 19th century counterparts. It's something that I, I've done all along in cowboy action shooting. Even my 38 loads that in my race rifles are the equivalent of 38 long Colt loads in the 1800s, the late 1800s. That's how I gauge my loads. What I wanted to say up front is, is this a harder gun to shoot than an 1873 short stroke lever action in 38? Yes. Yes, it is a harder gun to shoot. You have to pay more attention to it. There's something in this gun that you'll never see in my, my 38 special race guns. Recoil. It actually has recoil. Not a huge amount, but it trains you to handle the gun better. And that's one of the reasons that I'm sticking with 44 and Cowboy probably for the rest of this year. One of the reasons that I want to stick with 44 shooting in Cowboy is I want to raise my skills because I know for a fact that it works. My hunting 44 Magnum, again, this is you've seen this gun before. This gun has gone to Africa with me. It is a, an excellent world-class hunting gun. I shoot this gun a lot better because of the hundreds and hundreds of rounds of 44 that I've run through my cowboy race gun. Because you're learning those skills, you're upping your own level of skills. And one of the things I've found, if you want to try this, you've got to pay more attention to seating the rifle. When you pick the rifle up, if you start with the rifle in your hand or you pick the rifle up off a table, with a larger caliber gun and cast, you've got to be a little more specific when you shoulder the gun. You've got to make sure that you're there. You've got to make sure that you've got your cheek rest. The more you go up in caliber, the less you can get away with in competition. But if you've got any lever action gun, let's say you hunt with a lever action 30-30, Winchester 94, Marlin 94, fill in the blank 94, uh, Mossberg 94. Um, this will help you. This will make you a better shooter, and it'll make you a better shooter for less money. Not as little money as a 38 357, but honestly, not that much difference. If you're loading to, say, 750 feet per second, you're using something like Trail Boss, which is a powder uh, specifically designed for cowboy action shooting, or Tight Group or Red Dot, two powders that are my go-to powders when I'm reloading for cowboy action shooting. It's not that expensive. You're not paying a fortune for those reloads, and it will make you a better shooter. From my standpoint, because I like 44 Magnum lever action rifles so much, it's something I want to continue upping my skill on. Um, this rifle in Africa, 197 yards on a running Warthog, 300 grain double tap bullets. That's one of the other reasons I like 44 Magnum. We're going to be talking about that a little later. Got lots more talking about 44 Magnums, talking about lever actions. When I come back, I, I want to introduce you to my family of lever actions. You've met a couple, but there's more. The revolutionary TCM from Rock Island Armory. Fire it once and you'll be hooked. The first thing you'll notice is its sonic boom and enormous muzzle flash as it hurls the exclusive Arms Corps 22 TCM round downrange at a blistering 2,000 feet per second with penetrating impact shoots surprisingly easy with light recoil. The 17 round TCM series, so fun to shoot, it's like a thrill ride, only better. I wanted to introduce you now to kind of my family of 44 Magnum rifles, I don't, I don't know. As you know, I'm not a gun collector, I'm a gun accumulator. They just kind of fly in from different places and, uh, and they never seem to leave. This is though, this is my first 44 Magnum rifle. Uh, and it's, I don't know, 15 years old, 20 years old, something like that. It is a Winchester 94 in 44 Magnum. And it is reputed to be the worst Winchester 94 ever made. Uh, we all know that, of course, the, the classic years for the Winchester 94, made in, in uh, 1894, surprise, and originally chambered in like a 3240, 3855, and then in, in uh, 1895 was chambered in 3030, uh, 30 uh, Winchester centerfire, the very first centerfire smokeless cartridge. Uh, and they were wonderful guns up until 1964. 1965, Winchester made some changes, and every single one of them was bad. 
so it's sort of like magic metal in the receiver. Uh, the, the quality dropped way down. And supposedly the very worst of those guns were the very first guns made in 44 Magnum because they couldn't figure out how to make them work. So I was in a gun store, a gun store was closing, uh, shutting down forever. They had boxes of stuff and in one of those boxes was this gun, as new in box. And I said, wow, what do you want for that? And the guy goes, you don't want it, it sucks. I said, nonetheless, what do you want for it? And he said, I don't know, 90 bucks. I gave him 90 bucks. And I've actually shot it a lot. So that's one of the reasons that on the internet I hate that whole thing of wowie zowie. You know, we make a generalization, it's all true. This gun's been a rock. It's fed every 44 Magnum and every 44 Special Round I've ever shot in it. Shot my first cowboy gun, a match with this gun. It was really hard because it only holds nine rounds. Because it's a Winchester 94, you've got that whole different mechanism as designed by John Browning to handle smokeless powder, rifle cartridges. So it's always going to be a clunky little sucker when compared to some of the earlier guns, for example. This is another one of my family, if you will, of, of 44 Magnums. Again, a gun I've had for a long time. This is a clone of a Winchester 94. Uh, obviously, we had the whole sequel. We had th Winchester 1866. Uh, uh, the Yellow Boys and, and 44 Rimfire, then we move up to the 1873s, and what it was to the pistol caliber cartridges of the time, a 38-40, 44-40, a couple of other ones, uh, never 45 Colt, by the way. And then 292, John Browning understood that he needed a stronger action for like centerfire cartridges, for centerfire smokeless powder cartridges. And that first design is the, was the Winchester 1892. Now this is a clone, I just not even marked, I think it's Rossi. I don't know who actually made this or who actually uh, imported it. I actually know it's Italian, it's Puma. And um, they're made in Italy, they're made in, in Brazil, and they're actually made very, very well. Uh, this was one of the very earliest 44 Magnums that became available, and I, I really jumped on it. I thought it was a super gun, and it is. It's slicked up. Uh, as always, on these kind of guns, it, it goes to Nate Kiowa Jones in Texas, one of the great Winchester Model 92 gunsmiths. Runs great. Originally shot this in Sass Wild Bunch, which is 1911. Uh, 40 caliber or larger uh, lever action rifle and Winchester Model 12 pump, or Winchester Model 12 pump. This gun is great. And actually, I, I left it with, with Nate Kiowa Jones, and he said, I, I got a great finish for you because it was a stainless steel gun and it, it was looking icky. And, and it came back looking like it was 100 years old, which is something I really, really have liked about shooting this gun. Another 44 Magnum that's a little bit different is this one. And this one is headed for rehab. And this, I'll show you the rehab when we get to uh, one of our weekly 14, 15 minute videos. This is a Henry 44 Magnum. A decade ago, a guy calls me up and said, I got two Henry rifles, 44 Magnums, octagonal barrels. I know you love 44 Magnums. Give me 300 bucks and walk. I, said, I actually had 300 bucks in. I said, sure. Took it. And it came, he goes, by the way, it's engraved. <laughs> anyway, it's got this, uh, let me. I'm sure there are people who look at this type of stuff and say it's wonderful. There's people who collect it. My late father, rest his soul, bought a lot of stuff like this. I really hate it. Uh, so basically, this has been a safe queen. It literally has the hang... When I bought it in this studio, it still had the hang tags on it because I just... Those are terrible. And then I found out that I can get custom premium wood from Henry's. Henry repeating arms, I said, okay. And said, also can get a little bit larger lever, their larger lever, which I really like. So this guy is going to become a working gun. It's a little different from the Winchesters and Winchester clones as it fills up here. Um, there's kind of a dance you have to do to not put your finger in front of the muzzle. But just like a 22, rounds drop in. Drop them in, slide them down. People are like, that's really inferior to the lever gate. No, it isn't. It's different. It's, it's, not, it's not harder to use. It's just as easy to use. It's something you have to get you know, through your head, partly because there's almost never any reloads in single action shooting society, um, and partly because there's really no reloads in the hunting fields. Uh, again, I know uh, PH in Africa that exclusively carries a Henry 4570 for dangerous game backup. So it's a neat gun. I'll show you the rehab as we, as we move through it. Other 44s here, 
just briefly, this is uh, a copy of an 1866 Yellow Boy. It is in 44 Russian, the short cartridge. It had to be specially modified for that. There's a little stop on the lifter. So the shorter cartridge comes in, hits the little stop, and you're able to run it up. So originally a 44 Special. The reason I have this, I got this off a dead unicorn. Um, it helps get those little stubby bullets in there. You know, it's hard to get this off the unicorn. And finally, finally, one quick thing, and uh, then we're out of here. This is a work in process. It's a 44 Magnum mare's leg, of course, from Rossi in Brazil. The reason I say it's a work in process, I know you guys have seen it, but it's going to become a short barrel rifle. One of the reasons I wanted to show you, I'll file, file a Form 1, Federal Form 1, pay the 200 bucks, it'll become a short barrel rifle. The reason I wanted to show you this is, is when these guns came out, 1892, 1893, you could buy a gun with this length barrel and a full length stock. You could continue buying that gun. It was typically cataloged all the way up until 1934, the 1934 Firearms Act, which we all know is especially stupid. Boy, I love shooting that yellow boy 44 Russian. I'd be out shooting it this coming weekend if I didn't have to wear a mask and gloves and all that other stuff. We've got lots more triggered when we get back. This week's Triggered is brought to you by Ammo Man. Still offering $10 off any order of $150 or more with the promo code TRIGGERED. Lipsies and their wonderful guns of the month. Franklin Armory, creating some of the most innovative guns in America. And our two newest sponsors, Volkortsen, you're gonna see some really nice 22s, and Taurus, I've got some real surprises for you on the Taurus front. Welcome back to Triggered and our plunge into the icy waters of the Triggered Vault, where we're looking at lever guns and my favorite cartridge in the entire world, the 44 Magnum. Before we go too much further, I wanted to take you on a quick walk through the family of 44 cartridges and explain to you why I think there is so much versatility in the 44 compared to anything else out there. We got a good selection here when you look at them. Uh, the Buffalo Boar, these are uh, 270 grain dinosaur killers. These will actually cause your retinas to fall out, but it is one of the most accurate 44 loads I've ever shot out of a rifle. It is a tack driver, 1450 feet per second. More than any other round, these Fiocchis, that's the one right there. It is Fiocchi, it is a, a jacketed soft point, 240 grain, basic 44 Magnum load. When you say 44 Magnum cartridges, what you're really talking about is 240 grain jacketed hollow points or jacketed soft points. Typically in the old days, you were able to buy a Model 29 or a Super Blackhawk with one box of 240 grain ammunition with six rounds shot out of it. Now it's hard for me to imagine that people think that that's a real thumper. Uh, this is something I do a lot in cowboy action shooting. This right here is a 44 Magnum. It's 200 grain, but it is loaded down to 44 special specs. So why would you go to the trouble of loading a 44 Magnum down to 44 special specs as opposed to just running a 44 special like this guy right here? Well. If you're shooting a shorter cartridge in a gun, any firearm, whether it's a rifle or a pistol, that's made for a longer cartridge, if you're not careful in your cleaning, what's going to happen is you're going to build a ring of carbon up just in front of, of the bullet as it leaves the case. It basically gums it up. And then when you go back to a 44 Magnum case, there's that gum around there, and you're going to find it hard to chamber. I've caught myself off guard with that once or twice. So now, generally, I just load 44 Magnum. Uh, for a while, companies made them. Um, 10X, the old 10X ammunition made them, which is great. Uh, also here, you can see the, the 44 Russian, about which we've talked at length. I just want to point one other thing out to you really clearly. You notice that all the tops of these cartridges are flat. Lever actions have two magazines. You can't have a pointy thing resting on the primer. I have seen a 45 Long Colt custom lever gun blow up because 
the owner who reloaded the rounds said, yeah, you know, it's not that pointy. It turned out to be that pointy. Five rounds in the magazine went, blew the stock to pieces. Flat nose always on lever guns. If you decide to follow my route into cowboy action shooting, shooting a larger caliber gun, I have some tips for you I think that might help. I've shot cowboy for uh, 12, 15 years, something like that, and uh, it was pretty good And before I kind of wandered off into other sports. But the first thing is know where your rifle shoots. Sight your rifle in. Know if it's got fixed sights, know where it shoots. You would be amazed at the number of matches I go to where somebody says, I don't understand. I'm not hitting the target. I don't understand. I said, oh, did you sight your rifle in? What distance did you sight it in on? Where is it shooting? They go, uh, you mean it's not sighted in when it comes out of the box? You know what? It's not sighted in when it comes out of the box. That's not just exclusive to cowboy shooting. I saw that in a huge three-gun match with AKs where a person came out to the match, opened the box, shot, and didn't hit anything because it turns out they don't do anything to them at the factory. So that's number one. Shoot the rifle on a target and know where it prints. Typically with a cast rifle, your distances are around 15 yards. Someone once asked me what kind of sight picture I had on an 11-yard plate this big. I said, I didn't have a sight picture. I pull the trigger the minute the front sight crossed the steel. Because, again, as the great Brian Eno said first, the target defines the sight picture you need. If you're shooting a little target farther away, you need a harder sight picture. You need to pay more attention. If you're shooting a garbage can lid seven yards away, you can get away with a lot more. So know where your gun shoots, understand that. Second thing, this is a small thing, and you see it a lot with people who work with lever actions. On my, my big gun, on my heavy rifle, my 4570, a dangerous game gun, I wrap my thumb. That means I lever the gun, when the gun comes back to here, I wrap my thumb. The reason I do that is a great big animal may trample me into the ground. There's a safety here, that little thing right there. If you can see, that's a safety. It has to be depressed before the gun can go into battery. So if it's a great big dangerous thing that can stomp me into the ground, I will wrap my thumb over the top of the gun. Typically, I'll run the lever with three fingers, wrap my thumb on the top of the gun. I do not do that in cowboy shooting. I do exactly the opposite. What I do is this thumb, strong hand thumb, stays here. I run the gun. Thumb stays here. Why is that? I can do it faster. We've proven we can do it faster that way. Here, wrap. Here, not wrap. Catch is, you can't have a really stiff safety. And typically, cowboy action guns have that safety spring bent a little so it engages a little bit easier. Third thing, you need to know this whether you're hunting with the gun, whether you're using it for self-defense, and these are superb home defense rifles. When you lever the gun, the gun stays on your shoulder. That's the correct place for it. If you watch a lot of Western movies, they go like this. Bang! Why'd you do that? Well, the director told me to. It's wrong. Don't do that. John Wayne in real life would never do that. Now, I'm waiting for a leather butt pad for this gun. What I'm talking about there is this. It's a leather butt pad, and it's got a little tackier leather on the back. The reason for that is so it stays on your shoulder. When you mount the gun, it stays on your shoulder. Secondly, it's a good reminder to put Mr. Cheek down. The leather reminds me to cheek the gun. As long as I'm here, I have a great sight picture. So gun stays on the shoulder, lever, gun stays on the shoulder, lever. In terms of these leather pads, I have exclusively used Kirkpatrick Leather in Texas. Um, we've been down there, we filmed down there, they're great people, I pay MSRP for them. They are super good. Finally, the second thing is practice. I know that sounds like an anomaly in cowboy, but you need to practice running the gun. Run the gun, run the gun, run the gun. And then when you see all those great big plates, it's really not that big a deal to run the gun. Sequence from target to target. You will be a better shooter, you'll be a better defensive shooter, you'll be a better hunter. And you know what? You'll have a cool hat.
that was definitely a fun episode to do, and I hope you enjoyed seeing it again. It's been a number of years. This, of course, is my newest 44 Magnum. It is from Cimarron, Mike Harvey at Cimarron. It is a Winchester 92 clone made by Chiappa in Italy. But as always with anything Cimarron, you can see Mike Harvey's fingers all over this. We're going to be doing a lot more with it a little bit later on in the year. So once again, I'm Michael Bain. This is Triggers. You can find us on michaelbain.tv. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us broadcasting from bootleg satellites around the world. We will see you next week. Mm -hmm.